when an agent drops these down for good. And our game is kind of especially harsh because it's not like you have a strategic sandbox where you can delay and sort of go on grind missions. The, the main narrative, the war effort, the campaign is constantly moving forward. Mm. So if you're not managing your roster, if you're not trying to keep a bunch of guys on the sidelines, a good enough level to keep up, you may find yourself in some pretty tough missions where you're coming out with some noobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, I really miss Roger. Too bad he died on the last <laughs> ops. <laughs> Roger was such a great sniper. <laughs> Um, so, uh, in terms of the, 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 the history of the, the franchise then, you guys are kind of, in a way, breathing new life into games that have already existed. Is, is there any sort of rule set as to what exactly is canon in it? Like, is Enforcer part of canon? I think, I think I mean, as different XCOM fans I get different answers, uh, I think personally the, the stance we took at Game Arena is it's all canon, and we think we've developed a story that is supportive uh, and, and contributive to the, the XCOM franchise to date mm. without, you know, sort of moving anything and saying, ah, this never happened or this didn't happen. It took some time, but we think we found a way to sort of find a way to support what has come before. I guess I think doing it in this, in this time frame as well, doing it in this era, um, because you're obviously doing a different genre, it kind of gets away the problem of having to use shared assets or to like really stick tight to the current Xbox game or XCOM games, especially XCOM, which is the yeah. real-time strategy it just came out uh, it last year. It gave us some liberties, which helps. So there are some ties, like you'll see some, some visual similarities that we think are sort of touchstones to the franchise, things like, you know, cover and cover and, and cover to nice shield some of the ui iconography you'll notice like our little sectoids one of the sort of spoiler things that we postulate is that our primary enemy the zujari actually enslaved the sectoids and here you'll see them with slave colors on brought them to our planet for the first time so in our story the first time sectoids come to earth they're enslaved by another enemy and i don't feel sympathy for them i like to say it's like the goblins that are okay they're all jerks yeah, yeah. but you know, after this experience, the sectoids definitely know where Earth is on the map when they come back again in the future. So, well, that arc of, of that, that particular com, um, um, combat between those two alien races, will that be sort of resolved by this, or are you guys? Yeah, by the end of our story, the sort of we will draw, you know, we will you know, draw our tail to a nice and tidy close. Okay. Uh, a close that will actually have some be have some influence based on what you decide to do in the game. So mm. the players still have some choice on what they're uh, and the outcome. Well, you know, we, we set ourselves up, we throw the ball up for the, the future XCOMs to come. Now you can see here, like, even in like the sort of simple simple fights, there is a good combination between squad-based combat and the ability to sometimes just run out and punch bad guys yeah. right in the face. We're hoping that the players can feel what we like to say, uh, if you compare combating aliens to a sport, we like to say uh, combat quarterback. No, okay. I mean, I'm sorry, it's it's Yankee, it's Yankee football rules. It's oh, that's American. Fine. So, uh, I, 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 I know, so telling people what to do, but also yeah. taking the ball. Yeah, but and taking the ball, it. but being very much on the field. Like, mm. it's never safe. You can never just put the controller down, you know, stroke your chin and go, oh, what am I going to do now? It's that, that visceralness, that real time aspect that we think uh, hopefully takes a few people that have seen XCOM as a franchise before and go, mm. well, that's really not my thing. I don't like turn based. And they might try this because it seems a little more up their alley. Our hope is to bring them to the XCOM fold and ultimately make them XCOM fans. That may go, you know what, I'm going to try more XCOM and play the more you know, traditional XCOM games like Enemy Unknown, which is excellent. And then for classic XCOM fans, give them a new perspective into to the universe, a new perspective into the gameplay, which is refreshing and feels fun. We were talking, Morgan, before we, we went live about some of the older games. I was a massive fan of them on PC and on the, the Commodore. Um, I was incredibly shocked by the success that the franchise had years ago. I, I was kind of like Syndicate, it was one of those franchises I never really expected to see again. Yep. Um, how did you guys feel about about this resurgence? Do you feel like it's a... I, I think it's, I mean, super, super happy. I mean, you can't you can't overstress. Like, the guys at Firaxis mm. did a bang-up job on that game. That game is amazing. I mean, they started right from amazing source material, mm. but they're still a very Firaxis spin, and that is a studio yeah. that makes great titles. You know, and pretty much it's not a game they make that isn't on one of my gaming devices. But I think the thing that, I, we, you know, outside of just how fun a game it was to play, was that it showed, uh, like other games, like the sort of Demon Souls, that the market is such that gamers are back to the point where they can have games that don't babysit them. Yeah, yeah. They don't just put, you know, the pacifier in the mouth and you're just basically hitting buttons to the next cutscene, like how they used to be, right? Mm. And, you know, I like all types of games. I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna diminish any game because I like them all. But it's nice to see games that have that part of the gameplay loop in them, where the game itself is difficult and challenging, and the story is great, and that story can be supported with great cinematics, but the loop, the thing that you're doing, 
is, is giving you challenges and you feel like an, a proper hero when you're able to circumvent that. So it's great to see that there is an audience for that again. And I think that bodes well of where games are going in the future. Like, kind of like where network TV went from like yeah. some really good TV to some garbage and now we're back to good TV. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that games are following that loop where we've gone from like super hardcore games in the Commodore Amiga days to a little more mass games. And now there's enough gamers mm. where we can do different types of things, different genres, and different vibes, and there's a big enough audience for all those things to support it. Yeah, hey man, me too, brother. Uh, I've got so many questions about this game, yeah. but I'm gonna throw some out to the folks who are uh, tweeting at me. If you tweet at Daniel Dwyer, uh, I'll make sure I get your question over if I can if I can make sure I have time. David Doran asks in for profit on the uh, on the website and of course on Twitter asks, does this game have in between combat mission management hub kind of like the Firaxis game? Is there any team management stuff outside of the missions itself? So, so Absolutely team management. So in between all the primary missions, you go, think of the game like an RPG. There's primary quest missions and then secondary quest lines. You go back to XCOM HQ, and the XCOM HQ evolves over time. Now you as William Carter, you're a battlefield officer. So your job is to lead the team out in the field. You're not building onto the base. Like mm. the joke we sometimes have is, you know, battlefield officer, not office manager. Sure, sure. But back at the HQ, you are recruiting agents. You are customizing them with different kit, whether powers and abilities or weapons and whatnot. And the base itself is both a, a social hub where you'll interact with primary characters mm. and, a, and a proper quest zone in its own right. There's side quests and secondary quests within the base that both push the story and the, the fullness of the narrative forward and offer some unique viewpoints into this fledgling XCOM as it starts to get off its feet. So the strategic aspects of the game are all primarily feeding the your team out in the battlefield itself. Yeah. And the customiza customization therein goes through that channel. Okay. And is there any talk about multiplayer at all in this? No, no the focus is all on single player. Uh, we decided like very early on that because we're giving you this real-time squad-based control, and in many ways giving you, I mean, I don't want to come off as a braggart, but we're giving you a level of control that's not commonly found in most games. Like, okay. you know, and how, what you can do with AI between an emphasis on positional and movement and prioritization of target, not just firing off of powers, that we didn't want to dilute our focus uh, from putting on, you know, what we, we worried would be something that felt tacked on. So, uh, you know, we went, we're going to tell a story about an individual, William Carter, and focus on this gameplay, which is kind of experimental for us, and really try to hone that in. Uh, I've had a couple of questions in as well about uh, platforms. This game is current gen title, correct? Sure, yeah, current gen, Xbox 360, PS3, and PC, coming out on August 20th. Uh, when you look at this game, what other games that have currently come out? Because it does feel like a sort of a, a harp back to a bygone era, but not necessarily like not necessarily real-time strategy, but it definitely in terms of like tactical combat. What other games do you think at the moment? Like, have you have you taken inspiration from, or has this been very much a rebirth type of thing? Well, I mean, like I think like you know, like everyone uh, making games as gamers, you get your inspiration from all over the place. So obviously, we took a lot of inspiration.